Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Sorry again that this is another review that will be really, really late by the time that I post this. Uh, just like I said, I've been really crazy with my job lately. Um, hopefully I will be more timely coming 2022 with more videos and getting them more timely to you guys. Uh, hopefully nothing later than like Monday or Tuesday after opening weekend or anything like that for films that come out at that time that I'm going to review for you. So, But like I said, for this film, uh, for this review... I'm going to be doing uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. This is the most recent Spider-Man film and the most recent Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Um, I guess kind of as a prerequisite to this review, um, I would say uh, make sure you've seen Spider-Man Far From Home, uh, Avengers and uh, Infinity War. There's something with Doctor Strange I'm going to talk about in this video later uh, regarding an action he did in that movie. And I would just say make sure you've seen at least the trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, it's free for everybody on the general public. It's free on YouTube for everybody to see. Um, so I would say just make sure you, like I said, see seen the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer just so you kind of briefly, vaguely know what I'm talking about for some of the generalized stuff. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home and Avengers Infinity War. Uh, so th those are kind of like the prerequisites to this video, I would say, uh, just because I am going to be talking about things from those two earlier films and from that trailer. So won't be a spoiler review, but it'll be something that I will bring up in throughout the review and throughout my comments and my positives and negatives and things like that. But for in this movie, you guys, uh, basically Peter Parker um, has his identity revealed right away in the movie. Uh, there's a video that kind of goes viral. J. Jonah Jameson, who you know has since come back to the Spider-Man universe, uh, J.K. Simmons plays him. Uh, he basically leaked the video. Uh, everybody now knows who um, Spider-Man is. And so basically, um, his identity and Mary Jane's identity, or in this case, uh, Michelle Jones, I think is what her MJ stands for in this movie. Um, her and him and MJ basically are, are not safe. The paparazzi are on them all the time. They're always asking him questions. They're always following him home. Um, it's just not safe anymore. So basically, uh, Peter's trying to figure out what he can do, kind of how to erase this situation, make sure that this video that went viral based off the events of Far From Home and what Mysterio kind of left behind after his death, um, kind of what his options are. He basically tracks down Doctor Strange because he remembers working with him in the Avengers Infinity War events. And basically he requests to Doctor Strange that there's a way that either with the Time Stone, which unfortunately Doctor Strange doesn't have anymore, um, or if there's some type of a spell or thing he can do to basically get people to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. So basically, uh, Doctor Strange is willing to go through with it. Um, the spell is cast, but Peter wants to do additional requests to the spell while the spell is taking place. And as a result, this kind of messes up what Doctor Strange is trying to do. And um, it messes up kind of what's going on in our reality and our universe. And as a result, uh, things get pulled from different universes, different characters, different scenarios and things like that. And uh, they find a way into our re own reality, into our own universe. And basically, not only does Spider-Man have to figure his way out of this new spell, uh, but he has to um, take care of all these characters that are drawn from different universes and find a way to uh, stop all of them before it's too late. But overall, guys, I really enjoyed Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, I don't know if I'd call it my favorite Spider-Man movie, but it's very, very well done. I think if you're a Spider-Man fan in any way, shape, or form, whether it is the Tobey Maguire films, the Andrew Garfield films, or just these Tom Holland films that are a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, I think if you're a fan of any of those categories of Spider-Man movies, I think you're going to be very happy with this movie. Um, it's also one of those rare films, I feel, that fixes... Um, things that might not have worked so well in earlier Spider-Man movies and they kind of justify them a little bit more here and find a way to fix them. And because certain characters are drawn from certain universes, certain timelines are explored some more with certain characters. And this film did an excellent job balancing all of it. <clears throat> Nobody felt like they had a shortage of screen time or were not utilized in the right way. Everybody felt like they were utilized in the right way and that the script uses them to the best of their abilities and found a way to kind of make them a part of the script that felt organic and real and um, like I said that nobody got a shortage of screen time or anything like that. But overall for my positives and negatives of Spider-Man No Way Home, the film's exploration of what it means to be Spider-Man I think 
like I said, even though it's not my favorite Spider-Man movie of all time, I think that this is the best exploration of the idea of what it means to be Spider-Man, what kind of sacrifices you have to make, um, the tragedy of the idea that he's a kid doing all of this, uh, the tragedy of his relationships are always going to be in trouble because he is Spider-Man and because if his identity does get revealed like this, it really is dangerous for everybody involved, both for him and whoever he might try to date. Um, it, it really is a great exploration of what it does, what it means to be Spider-Man, what it means to, what kind of sacrifices you have to make, what are the rewards, if there are any, uh, what are some things and what are some aspects of your life that will not be as um, well embellished as, say, just a normal person would be able to do, like, like school would be very difficult, college would be very difficult, um, holding a job would be very difficult. Uh, this film explores this idea in a very, very effective way. Like I said, out of all the Spider-Man films, I think this idea is explored the best within this movie. And like I said, I think this film does improve upon certain things that happened in earlier films. Like I said, if you've seen the trailer for this, which was a prerequisite to this video, even though it's a spoiler-free review, um, in the trailer you you might have noticed that Dr. Octopus is in this movie, and Green Goblin from uh, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films is in this movie. Um, and there's obviously other characters like Electro from the Andrew Garfield movies and things like that who's in the trailer as well. Um their uh, timeline is explored some more. It's one of those things where I'm not a huge fan of the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, but I feel like Electro's character timeline is improved upon. I felt like there's more of a reason for why Electro did what he did and uh, why the events of this movie kind of um, reinforce why he is the way he is and the certain things about him that make him a better person and that make him, by the time he goes back into his timeline, he will be a better person, and be, he'll be a better person because of A, B, and C, and things like that. Um, it really does improve upon earlier installments that uh, use characters that are from different universes, and, like I said, it finds a way to improve upon them, and makes us more rewarded as a, re as a viewer as a result, too. Um, I also thought the film did an excellent job kind of showing what uh, Peter's paparazzi problems were upon his identity getting revealed. It's more so explored in the first half of the film, I would say, but they really explore that very well. It was one of those things where I legitimately felt scared for Peter just because I know just how bad that scenario is for him that now that he knows where everybody knows where he lives and who his aunt is and who his girlfriend is and who his friends are, uh, it's just one of those things where it's just the ultimate nightmare that you would never want for Spider-Man, and this film explores that very well, I felt. Um, so I thought all the paparazzi stuff was very well handled in this movie. It really shows just how dangerous it is for Spider-Man when things really get out of hand with something like that. Uh, I also thought Peter and MJ's relationship was really effective here. Um, I feel for every John Watts Spider-Man movie, the relationship between Peter and MJ gets better written each time. I, I, I liked what they did with Homecoming. They were more so friends within that movie. Uh, far from home, the relationships start to develop. They're trying to do stuff that's kind of a little bit more romantic and things like that. But in this film, they're, they're boyfriend and girlfriend in this movie. They definitely go through a lot of things that if a real boyfriend and a real girlfriend were to go through that and figure out a problem together... Um, some of the stuff they got to do, I think is just some of the things that people do experience in relationships, especially when, uh, it's something that is life changing, literally life changing for an action that they're about to pursue and things like that. Um, so I thought Peter and MJ's relationship was explored absolutely 100% fully here. I really bought what Zendaya and Tom Holland brought to their roles as far as making Peter and MJ's relationship feel effective and earned and makes you care about what's going on with the two of them. Also, the stuff with Doctor Strange regarding the mirror world and his magic and things like that. All that stuff regarding the mirror world with Doctor Strange I thought was very effective here. Um, I really enjoyed all the special effects and the green screens and all that kind of stuff. All the stuff with Doctor Strange where they're going into mirror worlds and there's alternate dimensions and Peter has to swing his way through like a, a New York that's upside down and things like that. Um, all that stuff I thought was extremely effective here. It's definitely something that they used in the original Doctor Strange movie in 2016. Um, and I really thought they effectively re-explored that in a Spider-Man movie. And I thought all that stuff was very well handled. 
And this is a film where I thought the action and the humor were both very, very effective. There's not, I would say there's not a ton of humor, but when the humor's there, it really works. It really is pretty funny when they land the humor correctly in this movie. Now, like I said, the action is very, very good here. All the stuff where Spider-Man going into Doctor Strange's mirror world and things like that. Um, and all the stuff regarding Peter fighting off Dr. Octopus and Green Goblin and having a huge fight with a lot of these characters at the end of the movie and things like that. Um, the action, the humor, I thought was very, very well explored here. Um, huge thumbs up for me. Really enjoyed all that stuff from this movie. But for my negatives of Spider-Man No Way Home, because like I said, it's not my all-time favorite Spider-Man movie, but I think it belongs maybe the top four for the best Spider-Man movies. So maybe like somewhere in the top four I would put this movie. Um, and the, the reason why that would be and why it's not it's not in the number one spot for me, uh, for especially with my negatives, which I'm about to bring up here, is I thought some of the rules regarding Doctor Strange's abilities were really inconsistent. Uh, for a character, like I said, going back to the Infinity War stuff, uh, for a character that can know every scenario in the universe, that knows every good scenario and bad scenario for every person in every situation, um, I thought the rules regarding his... Um, abilities to kind of make sure that the spell doesn't go wrong and that all the stuff regarding Peter's problems go, don't go wrong. Uh, it, I, I felt like if, if this were Dr. Strange from 2016 in his own solo movie, he would be more caring and consistent regarding making sure the spell doesn't interfere with Peter and MJ's relationship getting, you know, ambushed or Peter and Ned's re friendship getting ambushed due to the spell and things like that. Uh, there's just a lot of things regarding his character I felt could have been more carefully handled. It's just, I, there's certain things that I just couldn't buy into Doctor Strange pursuing, especially with him knowing all the scenarios in the universe and things like that. So I thought some of the rules and the abilities regarding some of the stuff Doctor Strange can do was pretty inconsistent in the movie. I felt like it just kind of went wherever the script wanted it to go. And unfortunately, it's not really the best way to handle something like that. Um, another negative I had was I thought the film setup kind of lacked some logic. Once again, going back to Doctor Strange kind of making sure the spell um, didn't go too out of hand and things like that. Once again, it was hard to buy into that just because you know he has the ability to modify something the way he needs to, especially with all the abilities that he has. Um, so I thought some of the film's setup lacked logic in that regard. So I thought that aspect of the film could have been better handled too. And for the most part, this is a film I feel that if you're a Spider-Man fan, you're going to love it. But if, let's say, you've only seen a couple of Spider-Man films or only caught one of them on cable once, like a couple years ago, um, I, I think you'll be kind of lost with this movie just because some of the stuff that's the most well-enjoyed are things that are, like, like I said, explored from earlier Spider-Man movies. So it's one of those things where certain lines from earlier films, certain scenarios, certain villain motivations and things like that are really kind of something you have to know going into this movie. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to enjoy the film that's in front of you. Um, I'm not somebody who complains about fan service, but at the same time, it's one of those things where I do feel like there's times where a film strictly makes something for the fans. <clears throat> and there's times where I feel like it's good for both the fans and... <clears throat> people who are trying to get into Spider-Man and things like that. So I thought some of the stuff in this film felt like, for the most part, it was mostly for the fans. Uh, though that's not a problem for me because I am a huge Spider-Man fan, it is something I could see bothering somebody who might not be a huge Spider-Man fan to begin with. But overall, I'm going to give Spider-Man No Way Home a 9 out of 10. I think it's an excellent movie. I think it's definitely one of the better films I've seen in 2021. It'll probably be in my top 10 somewhere, I'm sure. Like I said, not my all-time favorite Spider-Man movie, but definitely a lot of stuff to love here. Just... A ton of things if you're a fan of Spider-Man that you're really going to love. A lot of stuff that they improved upon from earlier Spider-Man movies that, once again, I really liked. Um, but like I said, some of the rules with Doctor Strange and some of the setup of the movie didn't completely make sense to me, unfortunately. I thought some of that could have been better written. And like I said, for the most part, this is for the fans. But like I said, 9 out of 10, excellent movie. Highly recommend it. Make sure you see this film if you're a Spider-Man fan and if you're a Marvel fan as well.